Hello, my name's Phil. Welcome to my little uh, starter motor rebuild demonstration. I've uh, scavenged three um, samples here to do. And the first one is a Lucas Inertia starter. The old cog on the front and a spring. Not in use a lot these days, but on classic cars and uh, my project car, which is outside, which that's come off of. So it does actually work, but we're doing it anyway. Um, very simple. Then we're moving on to a big inertia starter. And that's off a of transit, but um, we'll have a closer look later. But it's um, very similar to um, quite a lot of starter motors. And we have this one, which is off an old uh, old Ford. I think it's a cross flow uh, rear wheel drive, so um, that'd be Cortina. I um, can't remember anymore, that sort of stuff. Gone blank this morning. It is early. Right, so, get these off the floor, off the bench driver, and I'm going to start with uh, start with my one, because I want to put it back on my car. Right, now, the only bit on this, uh, this type of start I might need a special tool for is to replace, I'm going to do the job without um, without a vice, not even a proper bench. It would be very nice to be at the garage doing it with a vice and the press and uh, air tools and all the nice stuff, but that's not the purpose of the demonstration. So, I'm going to do this bit first. This tool compresses the end of the spring like so, so you can get the little circlip out and circuit out and take the um, drive off of the end. So it's quite simple what this does, it's basically just a big G clamp and it's the only tool that you have to um, that you'll need to change this. Um, but if your teeth aren't if your teeth aren't really damaged like these ones aren't then you wouldn't replace it but I've bought a new one to put on the demonstration anyway so without further ado we'll carry on. And there's several different types of um, this tool. My dad's actually got one, and it's uh, it's like a fork that goes in there, over the top, and you just wind a bolt up. And I don't imagine it's uh, it's a fortune to buy, but I've borrowed this one. Right, there's the circlip exposed. See it in the end? Don't look like a lot. Let's see if we can get it off. Very careful to make sure everything's sat on properly so you don't uh, damage yourself. Hmm, it's going to be fiddly, I bet. Fingers as well. Go on, get off. Right, yep, yeah, should have had my hand over that. That's that gone. <laughs> have to find that as well. Right, okay, I'll release that. say on the tin. So, collar and spring off. You can buy all these pieces, that spring is uh, £1.80 but you only need to replace it if it's actually broken, which ours isn't. So, you've got to remember the order things come off in, obviously, very important. So we'll leave that there in that order so it can go straight back on. And then this, comes off like that, a little spiral. Right, I shall just have to go and dig through the box and find the bits. One moment. Right, I found the bits, have a look. Phosphor bronze bush for the front. Whether I'll change it is another, uh, I don't know, could be done with, uh, could do it being changed. A phosphor bronze bush for the rear. Don't have bearings in this type of alternator. New brush set, new cog and a new brush carrier in the back, go like that. So, all in all, let's have a look at what them bits cost us. Um, if you want to order your stuff online, 
um, JCR Supplies, eBay. Um, they'll do what you want. Um, anything you're not sure of, take a picture of and send, and they'll sort it out for you. So the drive, the new cog, seven pound. Brushes, one pound twenty-seven. Both bushes, forty-six pence each, and the brush holder, two pound twenty, all plus fat. Uh, prices are subject to change, obviously. Not going to be the same in a year's time. Right, so, I wonder if I can take this apart without throwing everything off the bench. This start note is nice and easy. These bolts go from front to rear. I'll tell you what, they're going to take a while to unwind, so I'll come back in a second. Right, I've undone the screws at the front. I've also unbolted the four screws around the back, hold the back cover on, and also the bolt connection post. So, let's see what comes off first. The two bolts come out the front. Don't forget your little fibre washer, because that post mustn't touch the casing. Slide that out the back. There's a gasket in there. There's a gasket in there that I don't want to destroy really. I wonder if it will uh, come out without being destroyed. Probably not. And it's the one thing that I didn't get. So we may have to make another trip. So, it didn't actually look too bad, but definitely could have done with a clean. Right, that's that. Armature at the back. Put that down somewhere. Okay, there's definitely something wrong with our one because that that brass sleeve should be in the casing as far as I'm aware. Tap the off. Okay, so that just wants a clean. It's got a little locating dowel there, very important to watch out for little details like that. So that can only go back in one place. Which is nice, makes it easier to go back together. Now don't forget, when it comes apart, you have to watch for bits and pieces like that falling out. That actually went there, in the back of the casing. So, let's see what we've got. This is the brush holder. There's the bolt with the post. In the back of the casing. Lovely. So, to replace that, it looks like we have to drill out them rivets.